A while back, I asked you guys to submit footage for me to color grade and you guys did not disappoint. So firstly, thank you to all of you for submitting your footage. Everyone whose footage I used in this video will be getting my new color grading course for free. I picked a couple of my favorite shots and ones that I thought I could use to show you some cool techniques. And I'll show you my step-by-step -step approach to grading each one of these. Let's go. This shot was sent in by Eden and was shot on the Mavic 2 Pro in D-Log. The first thing I'm going to do is add a custom LUT effect and convert this from D-Log to Rec. 709 using DJI's D-Log to Rec. 709 LUT. Next, I'll add the balance color effect using the shortcut Command Alt B. I'll change the method from automatic to white balance and I'll select this eyedropper tool to select an area of white in the shot. I'll select the roof of this building. Next, I'll add a color curves adjustment, even though the shot basically covers the entire range on the waveform, and I'm going to slightly crush the black areas of the shot and raise the highlights a little bit to make the clouds pop a little more. I'll also adjust the curve a little bit to get some nice contrast in the shot. Looking at the vector scope here, we can see that the red and yellow colors are super saturated. So I'll add a hue saturation curves adjustment, and then I'll add a point here on the hue versus saturation curve in the green area, and again here in the magenta section of the curve. I want these points to be anchored here so that I can bring down the saturation of the red and the yellow like this. The only thing that feels off to me is the sky. It feels pretty desaturated compared to the rest of the shot. So I'll add a color wheels adjustment. And before I do anything, I'm going to add a color mask. I'll make sure it's set to HSL and I'll explain why in just a second. I'll use the eyedropper tool to select a range of blue in the sky. And then I'll click on this view masks button. Anything that's white will be affected by the adjustment that I make. I'll adjust the saturation and luma sliders here to make sure the sky is nicely masked and then I can click on view masks again to disable the mask. Now I'll increase the global saturation and the saturation of the highlights. Let's have a look at the before and after comparison. This shot from Jehansi, I hope I'm saying that right, is so awesome. I mean, what a cool shot. It was shot on a GoPro Hero 11 with a flat profile. And here comes my favorite bit as he flies through the spray of the waterfall. That is such a great shot. I'm curious to see how this would look with my fire and ice LUT. I'll add the custom LUT effect and choose the log version of the LUT. Even though it's not a log profile, it is pretty flat. So I'll just dial back the mix value a bit and that looks great. Okay, but let's see what this would look like if we grade it without using a LUT. I'll start by adding a color curves adjustment so that I can adjust the contrast. I'll crush the blacks in the shot by moving this point to the right and then I'll boost the highlights quite a lot to brighten things up. I'll bring these shadows down here to create that S curve, which will give me good contrast. I'll scrub through here to make sure that the contrast looks good throughout the duration of the shot because the camera moves and the brightness of the shot changes a little bit. Next, I'll add a color wheels adjustment to boost the saturation and I'm going to increase it quite a bit since we're going to be playing around with the colors in the next step. So I'll add a hue saturation curves adjustment and in the hue versus hue section, I'll select the eyedropper tool and I'll click to drag and select this rocky area down here. I want this yellow orange hue to be more red so I can push this point up. I don't want it to look pink, so I'll just adjust the curve here and maybe pull this point down a little bit. Then on the hue versus saturation curve, I can either use the eyedropper tool again or manually create the points on the curve. I'll decrease the saturation in that range and then I want to increase the saturation of the blue colors in the shot. So I'll create a point somewhere over here and boost that. If I push it all the way up, notice that it's boosting the saturation in the water. So let's leave it around there. Lastly, let's select that color range of the rocks again on the hue versus luma curve and darken it a bit. Here is the before and after of this grade. I recently launched my Final Cut Pro color grading masterclass, which I'll link to down below. In the course, I cover a whole lot of different color correction techniques, as well as step-by-step -step videos on how to achieve certain looks. I also go over different scopes and tools that lay the foundation that you need in order to color grade any footage. If you want to learn more about the techniques being shown in this video and more, then this course is for you. If you enroll in the course, you also get priority access to me, so you can ask me questions and I can help you with your color grading. If that sounds interesting to you, please check out the link below. If you buy the course, you'll also get my Fire and Ice Volume 1 LUT Pack for free as an added bonus. Okay, let's have a look at the next shot. 
This shot was submitted by Cinegrapher and it's an iPhone 13 clip shot in an HDR profile. If you bring HDR media into a Rec. 709 timeline, it's going to look blown out. To fix that, you need to add the HDR tools effect and then change the mode to HLG to Rec. 709 SDR. The latest Final Cut Pro 10.6.6 update does this automatically. You just need to have it turned on in your Final Cut Pro settings. You can learn more about the Final Cut Pro 10.6.6 update in this video. So go ahead and check that out to see all the new features. With the HDR clip converted to SDR, the first thing I'm going to do here is add a color curves adjustment so that I can increase the contrast. I'll gently boost the highlights and I'll drop the shadows a little bit. I'll also lift the black point so I'm not crushing the blackest parts of the image too much. Next, I'll add a color wheels adjustment and boost the global saturation. I have some red hues that are really saturated here. So I'll just zoom in to about 150% and then I'll add a hue saturation curves adjustment. Using the eyedropper tool, I'll grab the red in the shirt and I'll pull that down. If you look at the before and after on the vector scope, you can see that the red is no longer super saturated. For this shot, since the subject is small, I want to draw the viewer's attention to the boat a little bit more. Instead of adding a color wheels adjustment from the drop down menu here, I'll drag and drop it from my effects browser. You'll notice Final Cut Pro identifies that this is an object that it can track. I'll drop that onto the clip and I'll zoom in here again. I'll adjust the shape to be really small on the boat. I can zoom back out and then I'll adjust the feathering on this mask. I'll make it really big so that the roll off is very subtle. I don't want to do anything to the inside of the mask, but I'll select the outside of the mask, which will affect the area around the boat. I'll drop the global brightness and I'll pull the highlights down as well as the shadows. I'll also bring the midtones down just a little bit. We're creating a little bit of a vignette here, but we're not quite done. We need to track this mask to the boat. So I'll switch from shape to tracker and I'll hit analyze so that Final Cut Pro can track the boat. With that done, here is the before and after comparison of this grade. I've got this shot from Raj that was shot using a Canon R5 in C-Log. First, we need to convert from log to Rec. 709 and with the clip selected, you could come over into the info inspector and under the settings dropdown, change the camera LUT to Canon Log but I'm going to switch that back to none because if I look at my waveform here, the clip is underexposed. So I'll show you my preferred way of grading clips like this. I already have my custom LUT effect applied and I'll select my simple log to rec 709 conversion LUT. I'll leave a free download link to that below. The shot is pretty dark and you can brighten it up using a color wheels adjustment, but you're not going to get the best results if you have that color wheels adjustment layer after the LUT has already been applied. So let's turn the custom LUT effect off add a color wheels adjustment and boost the global brightness until the majority of the waveform lies around 50 IRE. I'll go back to my effects and move the color wheels adjustment before the custom light effect. I'll turn the light back on and now we have a much better conversion from log to rec 709. Next, I'll add a color curves adjustment. I'll crush the blacks here, not too much because while I want this man to be almost silhouetted, I still want to retain some shadow detail. I'll boost the highlights a little bit and I'll make minor adjustments to the curve here to dial in my contrast. Next, I want to add a color wheels adjustment to boost the saturation. I'm going to push it pretty high for this one. And then I'm going to add some blue into the shadows to give the shadows a bit of life and some more orange into the highlights to make the sunset pop. Here is the original shot and the graded version. The next submission came from Christy and it was two shots from the Sony A6100. It looks to me like it was shot in a standard color profile and she was having trouble matching these two shots. One is pretty dark and not very saturated according to our scopes and the other is a lot brighter and a lot more saturated. There are also some additional colors in the second shot so I don't think we'll get a perfect match but we can certainly make these two shots look a little bit more cohesive, especially if we're cutting from one to the other. Let's start with the second shot because I want to use that as my target. I want the first shot to match this shot. So let's grade this the way we want it. The clip looks a little bit warm, so I'll add a balance color effect using the shortcut Command Alt B and I'll switch it to white balance over here. And using the eyedropper tool, I'll select this little bit of white on her jeans. Next, I'll add a color curves adjustment to darken the background a bit. I'll add a point here to anchor the midtones, and then I'm going to pull these highlights down a bit, and I'll add another point here to boost some of the brighter areas. That kind of contrast makes the subjects pop from the background a bit more. Next, I'll select the crop tool and crop into her skin over here so that I can isolate her skin tone. 
You want your skin tones to lie on this skin tone indicator line. If you don't see it, you can click on the little waveform icon here and enable it from the menu. I'll add a hue versus saturation curves adjustment and on the hue versus hue curve, I'm going to click on the eyedropper to select a skin. Now I can grab this point and move it down slightly until the skin tone is closer to the skin tone indicator line. I'll go back to the video properties and disable the crop so that I can see the full shot. I'll head back to the hue saturation curves adjustment and I'll click to create a few points here that match the hue versus hue curve and I'll increase the saturation of the skin tones. This is what it looked like before adjusting the skin tone and this is after. Now we can try to match the first shot to this shot. I'll add a curves adjustment and I'll bring up the highlights to increase the overall exposure and then I'll adjust the contrast a little bit. It's brighter now but still very desaturated in comparison to the other clip so I can add a color wheels adjustment and boost the global saturation. Because skin tones lie in the mid-tones I'm also going to boost the saturation there as well as the highlights for the brighter areas of her skin. I'll add another color wheels adjustment because I want to warm up her skin. This time I'm going to add a color mask, making sure it's a 3D mask and then selecting her skin tone. I'll click on view masks over here and I'll play around with the selection until I'm happy. I'll also bump the softness way up. I'll click on view masks over here. Now let's crop into the skin so we can see where it lies on the vector scope. As you can see her skin is very cool or blue. So I'll push this global slider more towards orange to bring her skin tone back to a warmer color. Let's go ahead and disable the crop. And now these two shots look a lot more cohesive than they did before. Matching colors and different cameras is a tricky part of color grading. And I talk more about that in my color grading course, which you can go check out using the link down below. Thanks again to all of you for submitting your footage to me to grade. If you guys enjoyed this kind of video, please let me know, give me some thumbs up and maybe I'll do this again. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.